Joining us tonight with just 30 hours until the polls open on Super Tuesday, Michael Genovese, professor of politics at Loyola Marymount University. Thank you so much. So much to discuss. Okay. We're going to break this up into two parts. Let's okay. start at the national level first. Pete Buttigieg drops out before Super Tuesday. So many people shocked by this. Mm -hmm. What is your reaction to this, and why did he do it now, right before Super Tuesday? Well, you know, he came out of nowhere. No one expected him to make a splash. He made a big splash early, but his campaign started to fizzle out. And uh, my guess is that when Biden made the comeback, he saw that there was no real lane for him to go forward. And I am guessing, it's just a guess, that his internal polling said that on March 3rd, you're going to get crushed. And so rather than be humiliated, I think he wants to take the chips that he has Pull him back close to him and say, "I'm going to get out now, mm -hmm. so that he can run another day." And you I know think 2024. There are going to be theories, of course, about whether anybody asked him to step back to help their own campaign, right. or maybe offered him some sort of uh, pos future position mm -hmm. in their administration. Do you think that there's any weight to that at all? Um, I would downplay that theory. Um, it used to be the case that that was. Um, fairly prevalent that you'd promise someone a, a mm -hmm. something for their support. Um, now there are more hints and allegations. Uh, but I think Buttigieg can read the writing on the wall and he can do the math and he knows he's going nowhere. So get out while you're ahead mm -hmm. rather than face a, a really bad day on, on March 3rd. And so right now then in 2024, he's one of the people they're going to name right away when you say who's running for the Democrats. So let's talk briefly about some of the other front runners just really quickly here. Uh, Obviously, Joe Biden expected to win in South, mm -hmm. South Carolina, and he did. Is that enough? And do you think that's indicative of all of how he will perform on Super Tuesday? Well, it's not enough because Bernie has a big lead, and Bernie should do very well in California and Texas. Biden can win a couple of primaries, uh, but the question is, where's the delegate count going to be? Not just after March 3rd, but after by the middle of March, about the 18th, there'll be a lot of delegates that have been, been, been handed out. And so Biden, who, who started out very sluggishly, had a lifesaver in South Carolina, but it may be too little too late for him. So it it sounds like you're thinking that still Bernie Sanders is going to do very well on Super Tuesday. I, I think Bernie Sanders will win the big races. I think Biden will come in strongly second or third in some of those. He'll get some delegates. It's, it's, it's really a question of math now. Can, he be, can Bernie be stopped in terms of just getting the number, 1,900 delegates, before the convention? You know, Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar have both had their moments in this race where mm -hmm. they either surged with some momentum there, especially Elizabeth Warren early on. Where do they stand now? It doesn't seem like they're getting that big momentum that they had at certain points. I think the big surprise is that, how, that, is that Warren did as poorly in these races as she has. A lot of people thought she was going to be one of the people right down to the very end. She has not caught on. She has not captured the romance of the campaign, nor has she captured the enthusiasm. Um, a lot of Democrats wanted her as the left lane candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got Bernie. So um, let's talk about Mike Bloomberg. He has run a highly unorthodox campaign, to say the least. We saw another example of that tonight. He basically, he bought airtime, mm -hmm. you know, an advertisement that looked so much like what could have been a presidential address. Really unusual. I personally don't think I've ever seen anything like that. What is he trying to do here? And is that going to resonate with voters? Well, I think you have to remember, number one, Bernie, excuse me, uh, Bloomberg is still untested, mm -hmm. but he's still a billionaire. And there's a lot you can buy with money. You can't literally buy votes, but you can buy the kind of coverage that he's not going to get otherwise. And so he has not been tested in front of the voters. March 3rd is going to be a make or break for him. If he does very poorly on March 3rd, there's probably no recovery for him. So let's talk about President Trump. Obviously, uh, you hear this all the time in politics that every president, every administration is tested in some way, in a way that they don't expect. Mm -hmm. And uh, some are saying, some of the pundits are saying coronavirus could be that for President Trump. Now, President Trump and the VP, uh, and they have all come out and said very strongly, we acted quickly, we stopped travel mm -hmm. early on, and we feel strongly that we have this under control. President Trump's critics have said the exact opposite. Uh, who is right here? Uh, is the president and his administration really getting out in front of this? And what should the American people make of this? It's an election year, so both sides are going to play politics with it. So they sh they're both sides should be discounted. And, and uh, mm -hmm. I think what you have to remember is that uh, this came as a surprise. At first, the president tried to discount it 
and, and diminish its importance when they realized how important it was. That's when the question is, did they lead the nation? President Trump has trouble doing that. He's only been leading from his base, and he's not been a president for the whole nation. Now you need to pull everyone together, but he's torn so many people apart that he's had a hard time pulling us together. He put Mike Pence out in front, which was probably the worst thing he could have done. Pence went on the TV uh, interview programs this morning and was shockingly ill-informed. Uh, that did not inspire confidence. You need to have the experts on there who can tell you exactly what's going on, what you should do, what you should be concerned about. This is when you need facts and not politics. When both sides need to rise above politics, neither has been able to. It is a story that won't be going away for the next couple days or weeks, I suspect. Uh, Michael Genovese is going to stick around. We have some state and local matters yes. to discuss. Obviously, we'll talk about Prop 13, uh, the bitter race for L.A. District Attorney, and a few other issues in just a couple of minutes.